Our next presentation is from Dr. Raji Balasubramanian. Dr. Balasubramanian is presenting Time to First Positive HIV-1 DNA PCR in infants infected with subtype B HIV-1 is delayed in the presence of maternal antiretroviral use. Dr. Balasubramanian is presenting from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in the United States. I'm Raji Palasubramanian from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and I'll present our work on uh, early infant diagnosis of HIV infection. The goals of our work were to estimate the time to DNA PCR test positivity in non-breastfed HIV infected infants and to evaluate differences according to exposure to maternal or infant HIV regimen. As background, accurate diagnostic tests to detect HIV inf infection in infants are critical to ensure early treatment, and HIV DNA PCR tests have been shown to have imperfect sensitivity when given soon after birth. In our previous work, we showed that time to HIV test positivity may be longer in infants exposed to combination therapy. However, our previous analysis were limited in sample size. <clears throat> In this work, we combine data from two prospective cohorts in the United States, PACS or the Pediatric AIDS Collaborative Transmission Study and WITS, the Women and Infants Transmission Study. From these two cohorts, we included all infants who were HIV infected definitively or had indeterminate HIV infection status and who had at least one DNA PCR test before age three months. We excluded DNA PCR tests with missing results or missing age at time of blood draw and excluded infants whose mother's ARV exposure was not known. In summary, we had 129 HIV positive infants and their mothers from WITS and 299 HIV positive infants and their mothers from PACS. We classified maternal and infant ARV regimen according to the most complex uh, ERV that the mother received in the third trimester or at the time of labor delivery, and infants were classified according to prophylactic regimen, which had a start date that was prior to 45 days after birth. Our groupings of infants by maternal ARV and infant ARV are shown here, and our biggest sample sizes were in the maternal ARV groups of no ARV, single NRTI, those are the first two rows, or and the group which is labeled E slash F, which corresponds to mothers uh, who received three or more ARVs that included at least an NNRTI or API. Infant ARV was grouped according to no, no ARV, ZDV, or other. This shows the timing of DNA PCR tests in our data set. On the X axis is the age at the time of the test. On the Y axis is the number of DNA PCR tests and tests are grouped according to the cohort WITS or PACS. And you can see that we had a good number of tests uh, from birth up to about three months of age after which the number of test results drops off pretty sharply. <clears throat> Uh, participant characteristics uh, according to maternal ARV groupings are shown here, and uh, characteristics, especially CD4 count, gestational age, were roughly similar across the different maternal ARV groups, whereas viral load was lowest amongst mothers who received 3 plus ARVs or the E slash F group relative to mothers who were received either no ARV or single NRTI as expected. We used methods for interval sensor data and regression modeling to adjust for potential confounders in our analyses. Our main set of results are from unadjusted models that are shown in this slide, which show the cumulative probability of a positive DNA PCR test when the test is given at uh, from birth to one day after birth, when the test is given at 14 days, at 30 days, and 90 days. And um, we have provided estimates for um, by uh, according to groups of maternal ARV exposure. And highlighted in bold are our groups with the largest 
uh, number of infants, which corresponded to infants whose mothers received no ERV, infants whose mothers received single NRTI only, and infants whose mothers received three plus ERVs that included an NNRTI or API. We see that amongst infants whose mothers received no ERV or single NRTI, the test positivity when it's given uh, zero to one day after birth was between 25 to 29%, and it rose to between 74 to 81% by 90 days after birth. However, when you look at infants whose mothers received three plus ERVs, the test positivity rate at the time of birth was just 5%, and it rose up to a maximum of 20% by 90 days. And these differences were statistically significant, significant due to the confidence intervals that were non-overlapping. In this slide, we show uh, the uh, statistical significance of the maternal ARV group with respect to time to DNA PCR test positivity in unadjusted models in the uh, column in the middle and adjusted models in the column at the very end. And the adjusted models particularly included maternal CD4 and viral load obtained at a time close to delivery, as well as gestational age and uh, mode of delivery. We see that maternal ARV is statistically significant uh, with a p-value in, in the order of 10 to the minus 12 when um, in an adjusted, unadjusted models and, uh, and as well as remains significant in adjusted models. Time to test positivity by infant ARV was not statistically significant in either unadjusted as well as adjusted models. To summarize, time to DNA PCR test positivity was significantly later with receipt of three plus ARVs when compared to no ARV or single NRTI. These differences in test positivity rates were observed at the time of birth and they remain statistically significant at three months after birth. Adjusting for maternal slash infant characteristics did not attenuate our findings. Our study team included uh, Yi Bai Zhao, who is a PhD student at UMass Amherst, Dr. Mary Glenn Fowler at Johns Hopkins Medicine, Drs. Ken Dominguez and Steve Neshaim from USCDC, and Dr. David Shapiro from Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. We gratefully acknowledge the study participants. Thank you.